Let me tell this is what's going to happen to you. Well, they don't know what's going to happen to you because your case might be a completely different fact scenario from what happened to them. So every case is different. It, you know, chapter 13s are not cookie cutter. There's going to be different circumstances based on how much you make, how many people live in your house, what types of property do you have that either we're trying to protect or we're trying to get rid of. I mean, there's just multiple factor after multiple factor. There, it's just not cookie cutter. You need to explore your options and don't fall into the trap that poor guy did and he lost almost $200,000 of equity. Oh my goodness, that is terrible. Another thing that I will often see is people will meet with us. Welcome to the Bankruptcy Podcast, a podcast about untangling the complex world of bankruptcy in Georgia. Each week, we deliver the best insights and practical advice on how to navigate the legal waters of bankruptcy with expert guidance and real life stories. Now, here's your host, Jeff Kelly. Hello, this is Jeff Kelly, and in today's episode, I want to talk about how bad it is to get legal advice from the water cooler, i.e. your fellow employees, i.e. family members who are not attorneys. And uh, I've got a story to tell. Uh, Recently, we have seen foreclosures start to pick up again. You know, during COVID, there was a big freeze and no foreclosures were allowed and blah, 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 blah. And mortgage companies were trying to prevent a meltdown. And, you know, a lot of People have done loan modifications and so forth, and equity has been so high that a lot of you know, mortgages just, there hasn't been a lot of foreclosure activity recently. However, I do believe that that is now changing, and part of it is probably because interest rates are higher, the market's slowing down a little bit, but the equities values are still pretty high, but so recently I had a, a client call who was just absolutely distraught. Well, I say client, we, we didn't take his case, so it was a potential client. But he called and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. My second mortgage company says they have foreclosed on my house, and now I've got to move out. Is that even possible? Because I know second mortgage companies can't foreclose on you, right? Eh, wrong answer. Second mortgage companies can foreclose on you. Now, I want to talk to you why they normally don't. So let's just run through the foreclosure process in the state of Georgia. So in order to foreclose on somebody, you've got to advertise their house for four consecutive weeks. And then the foreclosures happen once a month, every month, the first Tuesday. And... You know, if there's a first mortgage, that has to get paid off first before a second mortgage company is going to get any money. And so, you know, normally it's the first mortgage company that forecloses. And, you know, if there's not any, if the property is not sold on the courthouse steps, the mortgage company is going to bid, you know, how much they're owed on the first. And sometimes they can take possession of the house and just tell the second mortgage company goodbye. So, too bad, so sad for you. But if a second mortgage company wants to, they could show up and they could offer up enough money to pay off the first mortgage and and to protect their interest and, and they could uh, take ownership of the house. But what happened to this guy is, you know, it was a small amount. I think it was like $20,000 was owed on a, a HELOC loan. And he's like, well, I know they're not going to foreclose, you know, nanny boo, blah, 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 blah. And my guess is he probably let the second mortgage company know that that he just was going to ignore them. Well, son of a gun, they they did call it out for foreclosure on the courthouse steps, and some third party investor showed up, paid off the first, paid off the second, and got control of his house. And he claimed that he had about two hundred thousand dollars of equity in the property, and he didn't get a dime. And it's like, wait a minute. If I owe, you know, three eighty on the first mortgage and twenty thousand on the second mortgage, but the house is worth six hundred thousand dollars, 
Can a foreclosure happen and just rob me of all of my equity in the state of Georgia? And I think the answer is yes. Now, you know, we told this guy, go consult with a local litigator, find out if you have any, you know, litigation rights, anything possible. But that's that's going to be a very steep mountain to climb. So the bottom line is this. Don't mess around with mortgages on, on, on your house. So you definitely want to pay the first mortgage first before the second mortgage company gets a dime. That that that's true. But you know, if you start falling behind, sell the property. Don't sit back and think that you're safe and that the second mortgage company is never going to foreclose on you because they can and they will if there's enough equity in the property to justify taking that action. Two hundred thousand dollars? Absolutely, they're going to do it every day of the week. I I don't see real estate prices coming down anytime soon. There's not a lot of construction activity, but every year our demand, our population, you know, grows through by various means, people moving in from other parts of the country and, and such. And it's just going to keep driving the prices higher and higher until there's a lot more construction taking place. And I just don't see it. So Particularly if you're in a, a, a house that's three hundred thousand dollars or less, that there's really super high demand for those. If you're in a house that's you know one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or less, there's even more demand. They're not building any new ones in that price range, but yet every day there's more and more people who are looking for homes in that price range. So. Maybe at some point down the road, the market's going to catch up, and you know when it does, prices will come down to more reasonable levels. But right now, you should definitely not mess around with falling behind on your first or second mortgage. If you can, if you start getting more than you know more than two, three months behind, you might need to consider selling the house. Now, I want to run through this real quick about taking advice from people you work with. That that is just a terrible idea to take legal advice about a chapter thirteen or a chapter seven from people you work with. I mean, people you work with can give good you know good referrals of of good attorneys they know, good offices they've had good experiences with. Yes, we love that, but you cannot rely on legal advice from somebody who does not have. A, a license to practice law. It's a terrible idea, and I'm shocked at how many people do this and will rely on it because, I mean, this poor guy, he says everybody at his office told him that a second mortgage company could never foreclose. Well, bam, they did. And, you know, if he had just come in and met with us and, and talked about his case, we would have told him, yeah, they, they really can do it, especially if you have all that equity. You really see it a lot amongst family members. I mean, some people just love to just give advice, even when it's friggin' wrong. Uh, don't, you know, ex you have a duty when it's your house on the line, when it's your car on the line, when it's your job on the line. You have a duty to educate yourself. And I've written a free book that you can download for free at kellycanhelp.com backslash welcome. You can download the book there, read it, educate yourself. If you want to get a free consultation with the, one of our staff members, you can do that. And, you know, we'd be happy to review your situation and see how could Chapter 13 or a Chapter 7 benefit you. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. If you're intrigued by the world of bankruptcy and want a comprehensive guide to help you get out of debt, head on over to kellycanhelp.com slash welcome and subscribe to our email list to have a guide to bankruptcy in Georgia. Helping people get out of debt delivered right to your inbox. Now back to the show. If, you know, normally when somebody is three to four or five months or more behind on their house payments, we'll put them in a chapter 13 and we'll come up with a plan to catch those payments up. So chapter 13 is an excellent tool for stopping a foreclosure, getting back on track and, 
and saving your house. Great tool for that. You know, do we ever file Chapter 7 for somebody that has a house? Pretty rare nowadays. I mean, as a general rule, that is a bad idea. And the reason is because if, you know, if you are in a situation where you're going to give up your house, it's probably better to just sell it yourself. Because if a Chapter 7 trustee sells your house, they're going to there's going to be a lot of legal fees involved in that whole ordeal and you may or may not get anything out of it. But having said that, you know, if it's down to the wire and you are facing a foreclosure and you can't afford it and there's no way you're going to be able to make a chapter 13 work, hey, you know what? In that case, it it might make sense to file a chapter 7, stop the foreclosure, it'll give you give the trustee time to sell the house. And maybe they can, maybe they can't get something out of the deal. So, again, I I just want to emphasize, if you want legal advice, call us. Don't fall into the trap that I see so many people falling into all the time where some family members like, no, don't file Chapter 13, let me tell this is what's going to happen to you. Well, they don't know what's going to happen to you because your case might be a completely different fact scenario from what happened to them. So every case is different. It, you know, Chapter 13s are not cookie cutter. There's going to be different circumstances based on how much you make, how many people live in your house, what types of property do you have that either we're trying to protect or we're trying to get rid of. I mean, there's just multiple factor after multiple factor. There, it, It's just not cookie cutter you need to explore your options and don't fall into the trap that that poor guy did and he lost almost two hundred thousand dollars of equity oh my goodness that is terrible another thing that i will often see is people will meet with us they're getting ready to do it and and i don't you know high pressure people into filing if if they don't have to file Now, if somebody's going to repossess your car tomorrow or you're about to get garnished, then we're probably going to tell you, hey, look, you really do need to move on this or the hammer's about to come down. But every now and then, I'll get somebody who's got a big pile of debt, they haven't been sued yet, they still have their car, and some family member will come and talk them out of not filing. And here's what usually happens. They will fight the good fight for about two or or maybe three years until they just can't take it anymore. And then they come back and then we file. And the reason is because when compound interest starts to get away from you, it is so extremely difficult to rein it back in. And it, you know, you know your situation, you know what your bank account looks like every week. And yeah, you can work overtime, double time to to pay that interest and and kind of delay filing a Chapter 13 or a Chapter 7, but you got to be honest with yourself and find out, am I making progress? You know, are the balances coming down or are you just running at full speed on the treadmill trying to keep up? And, And if that's the case, hey, you know, we need to maybe... Consider some other options. Don't delay if you don't have to. Now, if somebody, when I do meet with people who who truly have the means to take care of all their debts within three or four years, I'll I'll just flat out tell them, hey, you don't need me. It's it's pretty rare for us to file a Chapter Thirteen case for somebody that has the ability to take care of all of their debts without our assistance, without our help. And, you know, every now and then we might get one where we're trying to stop a car from being repossessed and the car creditor would only work with them. They probably wouldn't have to file. There are some of those every now and then. But usually people will put it off until the last possible second and they don't call me until they absolutely have to. And one last little thing here that I want to emphasize before we um, wrap up this podcast, whatever you don't drain your 401k 
to try to knock out your credit card debt. Don't do that. Come meet with us first. Your 401k is fully protected from creditors. They can sue you all day long. They cannot touch your 401k. They can get judgments against you all day long. They cannot touch your 401k. Don't liquidate your 401k ever without speaking to an attorney first. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I really appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Thanks for joining us this week on the Bankruptcy Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, kellybankruptcy.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Spotify, or via RSS so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you liked this show, you might want to check out our guide to bankruptcy in Georgia, Helping People Get Out of Debt, available at kellycanhelp.com slash welcome. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.